to episode 48 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali and I'm coming to you from Kent in the south of the UK where I live with my husband and our two daughters who are 13 and 8. And this is my podcast to talk about all things crafty and knitting and crochet and yarny related um, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, what else, what else, what else? You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Ali. And today's podcast nearly didn't happen. It's all a bit last minute. Um, I'm in a complete mess. I will try and film what it looks like around me. Um, I wasn't going to podcast because we've had a bit of a disaster. We've had a couple of disasters this week. Going off topic straight away. Um, but basically my husband's at home today. So normally I would film in my usual location in the kitchen. Um, but he is working in there. In fact, he's on a conference call. So I have been relegated to the living room and I wasn't going to do it. And then I just kept thinking about it and I thought, no, I'm going to do it because I'm already late, well, late for the, my own self-imposed deadline for podcasting. I'm going to get it done. So I've just dragged everything in. I've only half made my notes and goodness knows how this is all going to go. <laughs> Um, I've got a lot to cover and some stuff I'm going to cover because I can't remember if I've actually talked about it before or not. So yeah, I just let's just let it all unravel and see what happens. And I've just seen a singular magpie, which as we all know, um, does not bode well because it's one for sorrow, two for joy. So let's hope um, that, that that's not a terrible indication of how the podcast is going to go today. I'm having my tea, is it double-sided? Yeah, out of my Denmark mug, which is a gift from lovely Annette who lives in Denmark. I'm slightly obsessed with Denmark, having gone there on holiday last year. And she sent me a whole bunch of lovely Danish related things. Um, and I shared that in a couple of podcasts, a couple of podcasts ago. And it's a really, really lovely mug and my tea is just the right temperature. And I'm probably going to be drinking too much to, drinking too much? <laughs> Talking too much to drink it. Okay, so we're gonna, first of all, today, usually I'd start with finished objects and then works in progress, but I don't have any finished objects, do I? No, I don't have any finished objects. So I'm gonna go um, straight into the Strictly Sock Along because that's the big thing that's going on in my online life. <laughs> Is that the right way to put it? In my life at the moment. Um, so I'm going to start with the Strictly Stock Along. Then I will talk about works in progress. As usual, there's loads. Um, incoming stuff. Again, there's quite a lot. I did go to a yarn show. And also, I think I didn't show you some of the things I got at the previous yarn show. So there might be quite a lot of that. This is going to be a long podcast. Um, and... Then there's a bit of an unfinely bit, a couple of bits I want to cover at the end. Um, shall we get started with the Strictly Sock Along? I'm just going to see if I can open an email that I sent myself, which has got a spreadsheet, a Strictly spreadsheet on it. Because do you remember last year when I said, I'm going to simplify the Strictly Sock Along next year, we're just not going to have as many prizes. Do you remember that? <laughs> Yeah, we've got, I think, at least 19 prizes. Oops. So that's a huge thank you to all the people who have very, very kindly donated things as prizes for the Strictly Sock Along. Um, it's such a fun um, time of year and the Sock Along is such a silly thing. It's um, It started off, actually it started off just me because I just decided to do it one year. And then the following year on my podcast, I said, oh, would anyone want to join in? And everyone did. And this is its third year now. And one of the things that makes it fun, apart from all the cheating, <laughs> which is one of the things that's encouraged in this sock along, um, and seeing that people are knitting socks for the first time, or they're knitting socks for this year because they learned to knit socks in a previous Strictly Sock Along because they wanted to join in and now they love it. Um, but it's the generosity of the people that donate the prizes and it, that makes it possible to have so many prize winners. I'm not putting this very well into words, am I? Um, that just really makes it such a special sock along. Um, yeah, it's brilliant to have so many prizes to offer. This year, some makers are going to send the prizes directly. Um, some people have donated prizes that aren't makers that sell things. They just want to donate something for the fun of it. 
And that's just amazing too. I just, yeah, that someone would want to do that. That's incredible. I've popped in a few, a uh, couple of bits as well. I'm gonna share with you all the prizes in a minute. And I've got a spreadsheet here to remind me of everything. Um, there was five prize categories, which I talked about last time, and they were also listed on the Ravelry thread. So um, they will be linked underneath this video. So go and have a look at that. But the, the, just very quickly, it's the 10 from Len prize, which is when we draw winners um, for, I'm gonna have to refer to my notes. Oh, I'm gonna that. So they're drawn at random um, when the first 10 is awarded. And I'm actually going to draw some winners from the chatter thread, but also from the Instagram hashtag. And I've got seven prizes for that category. Do you see what I did there? One of the catchphrases of one of the old judges from Strictly is seven. So I've got seven prizes. Five of them are pattern prizes from Lily of Nordic Stitches. She has donated five prizes, anything of for five winners, so one each. So five people can choose one pattern, any pattern from her collection that you like from Lily of Nordic Stitches. That's going to be um, form part of the prizes for the um, 10 from Len category. Are you still with me? I think I'm confusing myself. And then I've got two sort of parcels as well for that one. Uh, and like I say, they will be drawn when the first 10 is awarded on the UK Strictly Come Dancing show. There's the Halloween one, which will be drawn at random from the FO thread um, for everyone that's got finished objects in the thread by the Halloween show, which I think should be around the 26th of October. It's the nearest Saturday before Halloween. Uh, and then made it to Blackpool. So at the end of November, all the contestants go and perform at Bla the Blackpool Tower Ballroom um, here in the UK. And if you've got finished objects in the FO thread by the date of that show, then you'll be in with a chance to win from that prize category. At the end, there will be a rule, rule bending prizes and uh, I will choose those myself for the people who have used the most cunning underhand tactics in order to join in. We've already got people um, knitting their socks whilst whistling <laughs> the theme tune. <laughs> We've got someone knitting in Austria because that's the home of the Viennese Waltz. <laughs> um, you get the idea. Um, I, I will um, take note throughout the sock along and I will come up with some winners at the end. And then we'll have the fabulous category which is at the end and they will just be drawn at random from the FO thread, the chatter thread and from Instagram. And uh, so there's a chances throughout the count to win lots of prizes. Did that all make sense? I hope so. I've got a timer going as well because my phone's happier if I phone, uh, if I phone, if I film in short chunks. So if you notice the video gets a bit choppy, that's why, because I have to keep stopping and starting. Right then, you want to see the prizes, don't you? Is there anything else that I need to cover? Oh yes, I didn't get my act together in time this year to um, do sort of an official yarn and pattern like I did last year. Um, lovely Sam of Betsy Makes dyed the official colourway um, last year for the Strictly Sock Along. That was her beautiful um, limoncello colourway. And Sandra of the Cherry Heart Podcast, she um, designed the Char Char Chevron socks um, for the Sock Along as well. Um, I just didn't get my act together. However, there are loads of things popping up on Instagram that I'm spotting, um, different Strictly themed yarns, and I'm sharing those in my stories, and I've started a little highlight reel. It's called Strictly 2019, I think, and it's all in there. So if you're looking for Strictly themed yarns or patterns, it's all in there. Um, also, there's a couple of discounts. So Sandra, who's Cherry Heart, is get, giving us 15% off any of her sock patterns. She's got five sock patterns in her Ravelry store. If you use the code that's up on the screen now, L-D-W-S-S-A-L-19. It stands for Little Drops of Wonderful Strictly Sock Along 19. If you use that code, um, you'll get 15% off any of her sock patterns. And that is, I think, I think that's for the duration of the sock along, but correct me if I'm wrong, Sandra. Um, and then there's another one, which is only going to be valid until the date of the first live show, which is not this Saturday, which is the 14th, but the next Saturday, so up until the 21st of September. And that is from Felicity of Iron Bridge Dye Studio. Um, and she is offering 20% off her new Save the Last Dance pattern. And you just need to use the code Keep Dancing. I will link both of these um, designers below. I'll give you their Instagram and their Ravelry details. So you know where to go and what the codes are and all of that malarkey. So it's all underneath. So you can rush off and get your patterns if you want. Um, 
it's well worth taking advantage of those discounts while they're there because yeah brilliant money off it's always good um da, 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 da. oh the chatter thread is in full swing it's really really busy in there hop along there's lots of discussion going on i'm woefully bad at it i think i think i just going to have to accept that about myself i'm terrible <laughs> terrible at it um but i've opened the finished object thread now and the prizes thread prizes thread i'm still updating um it takes me a while to get it all in there but i'll do a bit more today um so if you want to see pictures of all the prizes and they're all linked to the shops and everywhere you can go and buy stuff um go and look at the prizes thread um what else what else yeah so that's it we're underway i'm going to show you the prizes um have you been watching it did you like the launch show it was amazing we absolutely loved it i just think this year is going to be such a good year anton has got a really good partner by the looks of it so he could go quite a long way he does make me chuckle and neil for the first time has got his own partner and the girls were absolutely thrilled because that was alex scott and she's one of the um england f female football players so i mean what what a inspirational person for our young girls it's just yeah really good and they're thrilled that she's got neil because they love him he's so funny um what else? Oh, and I don't think I said properly last time, but the hashtag for the cow is Strictly Soccer Long 2019. That's the hashtag. It's on the screen now. Make sure you use it because I will be drawing winners from Instagram using that hashtag this year. Um, and yeah, just thank you to everyone for joining in and for getting so excited and for being so silly and for trying to bend the rules. Um, that is one of the main funny thing. The, one of the main fun things about this is seeing everyone bend the rules um, and just really getting into that spirit. Everyone is devious at heart, I think. <laughs> everyone's a, everyone's got a bit of a cheat in them, haven't they? So um, yes, it's really good fun to watch. And remember, you can knit your socks, you can crochet your socks, and you can double dip to your heart's content, and you can make as many pairs as you want. Right, I'm going to stop saying I'll show you the prizes and actually show you the prizes. Okay. Where am I going to put everything? It's hard when you don't have a table in front of you. Okay, so this is my box of prizes. So first up, I've got a spreadsheet. So some of them I don't have, so in that case I'll put a picture up. So first of all, I've got a skein of yarn in the Little Drops of Wonderful colourway. It's a one-off colourway and it is from Crafty Corn. And that is Landon, who is also on Instagram as a trans guy who likes to knit. Um, and he's got a... I don't think he ships internationally I can't remember I know I know he was planning to at some point sorry about all the rustling one sec okay so it's called little drops of wonderful it's an exclusive colorway for the podcast designed especially for a prize this is it it is beautiful uh, and it is on glimmer corn fingering base which is 70% superwash merino 25% nylon and 5% stellina and I'm putting with it this beautiful spotty DPN holder which was made by Suzanne um, who has donated a few bags and things to the prizes uh, to the podcast before she is inside number 22 underscore on Instagram she's a wonderful sewer and she often just sends stuff through the post I'll just get an envelope and she'll say here's a prize for the podcast she's absolutely wonderful and so generous and a very, very uh, talented sewer. So she's donated a couple of these. So I'm popping this particular one with the yarn from Landon. So thank you, Suzanne, and thank you, Landon, for those. And all of these things are on the prizes thread. So if you want to have a good old look at them and you know, zoom in and, and click through to people's shops and things, you can go and do that via the um, thread. Sorry, I just realized I was talking and rustling do that okay next up we've got yarn from atomic ranch that's melissa and she donated this a little while ago for a prize i'm just going to cut to when i'm not rustling i am now magically not rustling <laughs> this is the banana boat colorway which reminds me of a banana split it's really beautiful it's a sparkly one this is her um the back of the card that tells you all the 
the makeup of the fibres. And I'm putting that with another one of Suzanne's DPN holders. I have this one myself because it's got a lobster on it. Uh, this is a really nice big one. You can use this for slightly longer DPNs or, or normal size DPNs. I've used it for both. So I'm putting that with that. And um, Melissa from Atomic Rants has also given me all the proper little tissue paper and there's some tea in there and her little card um, and everything to go with the yarn. So I can wrap that up nicely for the winter. Okay, I'm throwing in a dodgy bag. Some might think that's the booby prize. <laughs> so, um, I'm throwing in one of my dodgy bags. It's um, in one of my very favorite um, fabrics, which is this yoga print fabric. Um, it's a sock size bag. That's and it's got a little tag here to hold on and another little tag here. And the bottom is upside called trousers. It's like a canvas trouser fabric. Um, which I have upcycled and on the inside that is a vintage, um, a very good quality vintage duvet cover that I've had, I bought a long, long time ago and I've used it in many, many bags. And inside it, just to take away the pain of the fact that you're getting a dodgy bag as a prize, um, I've put in one of uh, Attic Spin Dye's little mini um, bags. So inside you get two beautiful minis. I'm not gonna take everything out, have a look at the prizes thread. To see the whole lot. I'll show you the yarn though. I can do it without dropping with me. You get tea, you get a couple of stitch markers, um, you get a little lavender sachet and you get these two skeins of um, mini skeins of yarn. One is in the vibrant iris um, colourway and the other one is in daffodil. And I've just managed to unravel that one, so I'm going to have to put that all back together. Um, Andy and Angela very kindly donated a few of these, so I've got a few of these to pop in with prizes, um, both for the Strictly Sock Along and for future giveaways, and a full skein of yarn as well. So that's one prize. And the cupcake, the Earl Grey and Lemon Cupcake yarn from Giddy Yarns. This was very kindly donated by Helen of Giddy Yarns, and she did a month I think it was a monthly sock club that she did where they were all related to specific cupcakes and she dyed the yarn and you've got stitch markers and you've got the recipe so you get the recipe which is for Earl Grey and lemon cupcakes you get some gorgeous little stitch markers from crafty cat nitty bits which is like cake and things and then you get the gorgeous yarn the gorgeous yarn and it is in the Earl Grey and lemon cupcake colorway it is a hunt is it says it gives you the the yardage in 100 grams, but that looks to me like a 100 gram skein and a 20 gram mini there, although I could be wrong. But anyway, it doesn't matter how much it is, because look at it, it's gorgeous. That is an absolutely gorgeous color. Um, thank you so much, Helen. I love that. That's going to make a prize winner very happy, as are all of these prizes. I'm racing through it so that I can, so that the podcast isn't going to be about four hours long. Okay, the next prize is, where did I put it? Uh, again, Attic Spin Dye, I mentioned that they'd also donated a full skein of yarn in the Vibrant Iris colourway. Again, you get stitch markers, tea, and a little lavender sachet. Um, they're a husband and wife team, Attic Spin Dye. I've talked about them before. Um, Angela has Elos Dan, da, Elos Danus. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm going to put it on the screen, but it's a syndrome that affects muscle tissue. And um, she's a knitter and her husband, in order to support her knitting, started dyeing yarn. And they've and he started to dye more than she could knit and now they sell their yarn. But they um, their philosophy is very much about knitting and mental health. Um, they're, yeah, they're, they're a really lovely couple. This is their little label. This is Vibrant Iris and it comes with these beautiful little stitch markers. And like I say, some lavender sachets and other bits and bobs. Um, that's really beautiful. And with that, I am going to put uh, a mystery box. This is from Handmade by Pickle Lily. Now, this is Jo. She is Jo Pickle Lily on Instagram. She sells a lot of the UK um, shows and I've linked to her shop in the prizes thread. So you can go and have a look at the kind of thing that turns up in her monthly mystery boxes. Um, I've already got one of these and I've opened mine and I know what's inside it. So I know you're going to love it. Whoever wins it, you're going to love it. It's so lovely. I'm, oh, such a clever idea. So I'm putting that mystery box along with the Attic Spin Dye 
fibre and Irish yarn. So that is an absolutely amazing prize package. I haven't um, divided all the prizes up into which categories yet, but I will do that. And once I've done it, I will put that on the prizes thread so you know which category they're going to turn up in, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, so the next three things on my spreadsheet are things I don't have. So I've got a beautiful bag from Conchetta, who is butternut handmade. She's donated... Um, a bag for a prize before and I've got one of her bags lurking back here somewhere I can't reach it um it's button that handmade I'm putting a picture up on the screen now she's going to send that directly to the winner so thank you Conchetta that's beautiful the next bag amazing putting it on the screen now yes it's one of Emma Eldenwood Crafts sheep bags now these are highly sought after and can't quite believe we've got one of these as a prize. Thank you so much, Emma. She's gonna send you that uh, directly when the winner is drawn. That's amazing, thank you, Emma. And also, a third amazing prize is from Eva at Coco and Flora. She's gonna send this directly. It's a Cloud DPN holder. I have one of her Cloud DPN holders, they're brilliant. Um, a little pouch and stitch markers as well. Everything um, these makers do is amazing um, and the winners are going to be absolutely bowled over by it right the next one i've got with me is a sock blank and it is a one-of-a-kind colorway for the strictly sock along it is by felicity of iron bridge yarns right i'm going to cut out the rustling magical rustling cutting out <laughs> so this is a very sophisticated color from the iron bridge yarn studio who is felicity it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just a one of a kind. So that's that's all it is. It's just a one of a kind colorway for all the Strictly Sock Along. So it has no other name. I hope that's coming out on screen. I'm filming blind. I've literally just turned my camera on and I've started talking. <laughs> I've got no mirror behind it or anything. It, it's just a very sophisticated color. It is beautiful. It makes an absolutely gorgeous shawl or hat. It is really, really nice. And she's included with that a couple of glitter ball stitch markers. And she's selling these in her shop as well um which which are absolutely lovely so if you want some glitterable stitch markers hop along they're linked on the prizes thread um she also sent me a couple of minis what did i sorry what do i do with them oh well i'll cover those in incoming later on so that's another one oh i'm getting overrun with prizes um ba, 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 ba. oh right Suzanne at Green Lampkin Yarns has donated she donated a strictly sock along prize last year as well um for that and it's so weird because I woke up this morning at 5 30 stressing out about <laughs> Suzanne's yarn <laughs> because I was obviously half asleep this is not a reflection of Suzanne John. So last year, she sent a wonderful prize to be given for the Halloween prize. And she's done the same this year. And it came with a bag that was made, uh, she did a sort of little cl collaboration. Suzanne did the yarn and Craftmonger Lou did um, the bags. And so one went off to a prize winner and I had one as well. This is the bag, so it's got a bit squashed where it's been in my podcasting box. So it's a lovely Halloween bag and I remember putting it away last year and thinking I cannot wait to knit those socks coming up to Halloween. The yarn inside it, this isn't the prize, this is just me going off on a tangent. Um, the yarn inside it is called Witchy Legs. It, it's a micro striping sock um, in sort of witchy tights colour. And I've got in here as well um, a little sort of purpley mini and this was a gift. It's a mothy in the squid colour and last Christmas this was a gift from Lorraine who um, I met at Five Reese this year. She's purple rain, purple rain six, seven on Instagram and she sent me this wonderful sort of deep purpley um, sparkly mini and I thought that would be a lovely sort of contrast colour to go with it so I put it all in my Halloween bag got all excited I've got the little pumpkin stitch marker and I was going to talk about it today and I just have now <laughs> and I woke up at 5 30 just thinking how am I going to have time to do that I'm so stressed how am I going to have time to do that and my strictly socks and the other things up and it was like a really real, real stress like it was really important and I, when I eventually woke up properly, I thought, it's knitting, it's socks. Get a grip, woman. Anyway, 
that's all ready for Halloween. So I am going to start them, even though I've got 100,000 other pairs of socks on the needles. Oops. Everything's okay. Um, but the point is, Suzanne has donated a prize for this year's Halloween as well. She has donated a skein of her Fright Night colourway. There's some stitch markers in there as well. I'm not going to take it out of the bag because it's all nice in there and I don't want to spoil it. Um, so I'm hoping you might be able to see it. It's um, got these beautiful orange, purpley, pinky stripes that go through the grey. It's called Fright Night and I'm going to put another of the Attic Spin Dye little mini pouches in with that as well. And that's going to be in the Halloween prize category also. Okay, next prize, getting through the spreadsheet. Oh, goodness me. Are we even halfway through yet? Not quite. Oh, yeah, just over. Okay, Little French Meadow. Um, Alison got in touch um, from Little French Meadow to say that they will donate a colourway of choice um, to a winner. So I don't know if that is limited to just the Strictly colourways that they have, because they have got some amazing Strictly colourways this year. If you check out my stories and also their own feed you'll see them um and actually i've got some of them in my incoming as well uh so she, they're going to give uh, one skein of your choice to you if you win it i've also got um back to blighty has oh but i've got this except it's mine <laughs> back to blighty so lovely lovely becky um of back to blighty yarns um she is going to donate her fame colorway which she's dyed for strictly this year um she's going to send that directly to the winner but i do have a scheme here which i'll show you it was in this amazing paper that she wrapped it in i'm pretty sure that that might have been um just for me i like to think it was just for me so it's probably not but look it's got lobsters on it it's got lobsters I just love it. I love lobsters. I know I say that every podcast. I'm very repetitive. <sighs> My time is about to go off to tell me that I've been talking for way too long. This is Fame by Back to Blighty. It's a sock set, so you get 50 grams and 20 grams. And as soon as she said she was going to donate one of these as a prize, I was like, oh, really? Are you going to be selling them at all? And she was like, yeah, they'll be in my shop next week. And the moment that she posted they were in her shop, I was like, I'm buying some. <laughs> so I ran straight there to get my own. If I was a good sock knitter and actually had some speed, I would knit this as well as my actual Strictly socks that I've already started. But we'll see. Put that back there. Right. The mess is just getting worse. Okay, the next the next prize I've only just got because I bought it at the Southern Wall show that I went to, and I'm going to put a little bit of a vlog at the end of this podcast if there's enough time about my time at Southern Wall show because um, it was so much fun. I think it is literally I think it's my favourite yarn show that I go to, and I granted I don't go to many, <laughs> but and it's I think. Possibly the convenience of being able to stay at my stepmom's house helps as well. Um, but it's just, I, I just really like it. I like the venue. Um, and Lola was there from Third Vault Yarns. Now I have bought this to donate as a prize. And the reason is that I, every time I go to a yarn show and I see Lola there, I have bought pretty much the same yarn. I've now got three skeins of her yarn. Two are in the same colourway, Mazakine, which is a uh, colourway inspired by uh, the TV series Lucifer, one of the characters in it. It's called Mazakine, and uh, she's such a good character. Um, and the, and the colourway that she's dyed for that, it's, it's just beautiful. So I bought one skein once, quite a long time ago, and then I decided I wanted another skein of it so I could make a garment, but then obviously the dye lot had changed, it was slightly different, and I thought fine, because I could fade it, that was all right. Then I decided I needed another skein of it, but she didn't have any, so I bought something slightly different in a slightly different colourway that was kind of the same. <laughs> and every time I think I've got to make, I mean this has been going on for years, years, and every time I go to a store I just say to myself, don't buy another skein of mazakine. Just don't do it. Don't buy another skein of mazakine in different dialogues. <laughs> so this time I treated myself to completely different colours, one of which I will share with you in incoming and the other one I bought specifically as a prize because I'm very aware that a lot of people donate prizes and I wanted to put something, put my money where my mouth is and put something in myself. So along with one of Suzanne's spotty DPN holders, I am putting a skein of this gorgeous 
Librarian Sock Base Yarn by Third Bolt Yarns. It is a super wash blue face Leicester, which is, I just love blue face Leicester, and nylon. The colorway is Oh No Not Again. I don't know what that means. Lola dye, sort of sci-fi related things, inspired things. And sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. Or sometimes I'll read the name out and Dan will go, oh yeah, that's from Star Wars. And I go, oh right, sorry. <laughs> Terry Patchett and Red Dwarf and Lucifer, but anything Star Wars or anything like that, I'm, I'm just not very good. I need to learn more. I need to watch more of these things. Anyway, I'm rambling. The colourway is beautiful. Lola dyes some really lovely colourways. Very clever and different to anything else that I usually see at yarn shows. And I'm just really proud of myself for not buying yet another skein of Mazakine. <laughs> another skein of Mazakine. Um, yeah, so that's one prize along with the DPM holder. What's next? Um, okay, I've got, uh, right, so the, I've got a couple of things coming. So they're on my list, but I haven't got them yet. So until I've got them, I won't mention them. Um, there is, uh, la, 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 la. okay, so of the prizes that I um, have, that's it for now. I do have two more, I think, coming. Three more, sorry. Three more coming. And there's one that's being sent from... Um, ah! Bear with me. So I just needed to jog my memory of the name of the yarn. So Michelle, who is Queen of, Queen of All Things Dramatic on Instagram, she offered to post a, one winner for the Blackpool Prize, um, a skein of... Um, the Yarn Badger's Seaside Rock colourway yarn. And she said she'd even pop a couple of other little bits in as well. So that is really, really kind. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, the yarn is um, gorgeous. I'm gonna see if I can get the picture up on my rather dodgy iPad to show you. No, apparently I can't. Oh, hang on. No, <laughs> that's a screenshot. Oh, this isn't gonna work, is it? It looks like that. <laughs> Um, it's it's really beautiful. So thank you so much, Michelle, for donating that. And I've got a couple more coming, but I think I need to stop rambling on and tidy this little lot up and move on to the next section. Right, I think we have covered Strictly Sock Along. I don't think I've missed anything. Just to say it's wonderful to see everyone joining in. Um, thank you again so much to the generosity of everyone that has donated prizes. Um, and let's just have lots of fun and encourage everyone to try and knit some socks and remember you don't have to be in the UK and you certainly don't need to be watching Strictly to join in go and have a look at the rules or rather the sort of you know lack of rules it's all rather flexible it's meant to be fun um it's not it's not serious okay um would you like to see my Strictly socks before we move on that could start off whips couldn't it if I show you my Strictly socks now I'll just take a sip of my tea and I must say to you now that I've been doing the Strictly Sock Long. This is its third official year, but obviously I did it a year before. So, you know, I am a, a, a pretty um, experienced Strictly Sock Alonger. And I don't want anyone to feel intimidated by the amount um, of knitting that I got done during the launch show. So if you haven't got as far as me, that's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like looking at Instagram and people are like past the first heel or something like that. And I'm like, I've knit five rows <laughs> of one sock. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how far I got in the launch show, partly because I messed up and had to frog it back after five rows and start again because probably I was distracted by Anton or someone. Um, yeah. So I, that, that's where I am with my first Strictly Sock Along. There's nothing much to say about that, is there? Other than it's living in my uh, Cocoa and Flora Rain Cloud DPN holder. And the whole project I've selected for my Strictly Socks, um, my llama bag, which was made for me by Sarah One Daisy on Instagram. We've, do, we've done a Christmas swap a couple of years now. Um, we'll be doing the same again this year. So I thought that was good because the llamas have got tassels and tassels and Strictly. And the yarn I'm using is one of last year's Strictly colourways by Little French Meadow. And it's called It's a Disaster, Darling. And every time I say that, I feel like I have to say it like Ellie from Craft House Magic, who always says, it's a disaster, darling. <laughs> 
Um, and this is what it looks like. I've just balled it up into two balls. There you go. It's a disaster, darling. That's the main colour. And then you get a mini, which is just a lovely sort of tonal navy blue to go with it. Um, I've just done a little bit of that at the top of the ribbing and then I'll do the heels and toes with the contrast colour as well. Um, what else have I got in here? I've got some, this was also in the bag from when I did the swap with Sarah and there's a few other little kits as well. I'm not gonna go into that, I'm rambling. So that's my first work in progress. Um, my next work in progress, oh, I wanted to update you on my, my favorite jeans top. So I talked about this last time and I had got to the ribbing. Nothing has changed with this, but I just want to tell you what my um, conclusion is about it. So this is the front panel. I really, really like it. It's all made with acrylic yarn. And I started to do the rib. It's not working. It's bulging out. I don't like it. I hate doing crochet rib and I don't like the white. I want to do it in this dark purple. I need to find the ball band for that so I know what colour it is and what um, dye lot it is. And then I'm gonna just order another ball of it. I'm not gonna need more than one ball. I was trying to avoid ordering anything but needs must. I'd rather spend the time um, on this and get it right. Then, um, where's my notes gone? Uh, Alison, who is Oopsie Daisy Crochet, she said, if you don't like knitting that kind of rib, why don't you just do the front post double crochet rib, which is where you work um, side to side rather than up and down, and um, you work into the front posts of your stitches and you create ribbing. I've got a project right here that I can show you to demonstrate it. This is the Colour Block Shawl by Ilaria, Ilaria Kaliri. She's a, a, what is she on Instagram? Have I written it down? She's Erali Gray on Instagram. She's a crochet designer um, and a groomy designer. And this is what the front post double crochet ribbing looks like. Um, so because you, you work it side to side as well, you have control over how long you want your ribbing to be or how, you know, if you want it shorter or longer. Whereas if you're working this, you're kind of committed from the outset. It's got to be that length and that's it. You can't change it. So what I'm going to do is frog that, frog all the picked up stitches, and then I'm going to work my ribbing like this. But, and this was also Alison's suggestion, before I do that, I'm going to seam the front and back pieces together so that I have a really good idea of how long I want the rib to be based on how it sits when I wear it. Perfect, I don't know why I didn't think of it. The other option would have been to seam it together and do a knitted rib, um, which also would be a, a, a fantastic way to solve that issue. But I really like the idea of keeping it with the crochet, so I'm gonna try the front post double crochet rib. So that's where I am with the, um, my favourite jeans top. Oh, and I should say it's pattern by Natalie, who is Detroit Knots on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Oh, and the bag, I should have said, I always forget to say about the project bag. This is my lovely bag from Claudia, who is Crochet Luna. We did a little swap last year or the year before, and she is my partner in crime when it comes to running the dodgy bag now. In fact, it was her brainchild. It was her idea to run the dodgy bag now. We've done it twice now, and we've really enjoyed it. Um, and I love this bag. It's perfect size for my crochet top. Actually, it just goes to show what a good size it is, because that's quite a big thing to have in a project bag, is a crochet top, isn't it? So. Yeah, that is my lovely bag. Okay, that's just more stuff on the floor now, isn't it? What is my next work in progress? Shall I go into all the socks? Oh, right, I'm going to show you something new. This is partly the fault of Sophie, who is of the Spring Snowflake um, podcast, and also Sophie Swan on Instagram. And partly the fault of Sharon at Dragon Hill Yarn Studio, or Dragon Hill Yarns. Um, on the second day of the Southern Wool Show, so me and my mum went to the Southern Wool Show uh, in the last weekend of August, it was 31st of August, 1st of September. We went both days, we had a lovely time. It was We met so many lovely people. So many people said hello, which was just both weird, because I just think, oh, it's just it feels so weird that like people would want to say hello. So thank you to everybody who did. You 
each and every one of you made my entire weekend, my entire week, month probably. Um, and it, we just had such a lovely time. And on the second day, we were just chatting away to Sharon at Dragon Hill Yarns. And it just felt such a relaxed morning because we'd already been the day before. We had plenty of time to sort of just mooch about. And she was telling us all about Tunisian crochet. And I'd never even considered it. I've always been a bit like, no, it's not for me. But she was so enthusiastic and I had very nearly bought one of her kits. And I thought, no, no, it's right at the beginning of the day. I'm not going to commit. I'm just going to look around. No commitments yet. I, I can always come back. And we got right to the end of the day and at the other end of the hall there was a guy selling um, crochet hooks and knitting stuff, knitting needles and things like that. And he had a really basic Tunisian crochet hook for four pounds. Just a straight one, you can get them with cables on. So I thought, right, I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna do it and I'm just gonna pull some yarn from Stash at home and give it a go, I'll find a free pattern. So I was texting Sophie going, what size hook should I get? If I would get one Tunisian hook, what should I get? And, uh, Sharon at um, the uh, Dragon Hill Yarns had said maybe a four millimetre and Sophie said five so I was like okay I'll get four and a half because then I'm right in between the two so I got four and a half one and then I got home and I looked up a pattern and it's called the Cobbled, Sh Cobbled Street, is it Cobbled? I didn't write it down, I think it's the Cobbled Street Cow, it's a free pattern by something else I didn't write down so I'm putting it all on the screen now um, and I just pulled some gorgeous yarn from my stash. This was a present for my sister for my birthday this year. It's by um, Biff Sugar Yarns, one of the most amazing dyers. I love her um, yarns. Um, it's a DK weight and it's in the colourway Seagull. Oh, that might explain a lot. I didn't realise it was a DK weight. <laughs> I thought it was fingering weight, which explains why I've used more yarn than I thought I would. Not a problem. Um, I might have to buy another skein or find another one as a contrast because I am running out of yarn quicker than I expected. But that would be why. It's because I am a complete donut. It's in the colourway Seagull. It is absolutely beautiful. And honestly, this project that I'm doing could not be more perfect for it. And this is my very first Tunisian crochet. This is what it looks like. So it's got a pattern that's made by using Tunisian simple stitch and Tunisian knit stitch. I hope you can see all this. Um, yeah, it could not be more perfect. I am loving it. That little bit there has used um, 50 grams of the DK weight. Um, if I'd used the right weight, <laughs> would have used slightly less because this pattern is designed for one skein of yarn however if I knit that again that's going to be plenty big enough for a close fitting cow rather than the loose fitting cow which is fine by me so if I can get it to do that that would be brilliant but I have to say I'm slightly addicted to this I've been doing a little bit of this every morning um yeah I'm really really loving it it's a very addictive thing to get into and I'd highly recommend this pattern as a beginner's pattern and on the website, they've also got picture tutorials of how to do all the stitches. But also Sharon of Dragon Hill Yarn, she's got um, a YouTube channel with tutorials as well. So if you're interested in giving it a bit of a go, I'd recommend those as places to start. And I'm keeping it all in my little bag. That, well, it's a little yarn bowl that I got at uh, the Southern Wool Show. It's by the Treadling Woman. It's a really thick canvas bag. How cool is that? I saw it on the stool as soon as I walked into the Berkshire stand and I was like, that's mine, and getting it. Absolutely love it, it was only a fiver. And I kept the little thing on it because it's got all of her details. So that's the treadlingwoman.co.uk. And I believe she's also on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and my mum got a handbag from her stool as well. So that is my Tunisian crochet work in progress. Right, next work in progress, Phoebe's leg warmers, seeing as they're right in front of me here. Oh, there's that bit of yarn I was looking for, stuck to the bag. This is waste yarn for Lilia's socks for when I take it off the needles to try it on her, which I will show you why in a minute. Uh, this is all living in my bag, which is by Sophie, who I was just talking about, the Spring Snowflake podcast. She surprised me with this beautiful bag. Um, and it's got poppers on it. I love it. I love it so much. So straight away I put in the leg warmer project that I took to Scotland and this has been all the way to Aberdeen and back with me. Uh, the yarn is again from Annette who I mentioned earlier. She got me the mug. She sent some yarn for each of the girls for me to make them socks. But Phoebe did not want socks. She wanted leg warmers. 
She knows her own style, does Phoebe. I'm just untangling a bit. So um, I spoke about this on the last episode, but basically I'm making up the pattern. It took me a while to get my head around it. I've tried them on her a few times. They are fitting perfectly. They probably need to be about twice the length in order to sort of have that kind of wrinkled down look that she wants. And I'm loving them, I'm just doing two at a time. Not my favorite way to do things, but I think I would completely lose interest if I um, did them one at a time, or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm just plowing through these as and when I can. It's good car knitting. You can't drop a DPN when you've got them like this, can you? And those are Phoebe's leg warmers. The yarn is um, Regia Perfect in one of their rainbow colours. So that is one of my works in progress. And then um, Lilia's socks, she also got a rainbow yarn. It's just slightly different. Oh, it's here. I was working on these last night. These are, I'm doing these concurrently, except one sock is now vastly ahead of the other one. This is the second sock. I haven't even done the heel yet. And the other one, I am past the heel and all the way up here. So I'm doing them toe up because she wanted them as long as I could possibly get them. Um, and so top was the way to go. I'm just gonna um, knit until I run out of yarn. I think from looking at it, I think I've still got yellow, green, blue, and possibly purple until I run out. But I have to keep taking them off the needles to try and try them on her to check they're still fitting the, the top part of her leg. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to increase slightly. I don't want them to fall down. So, but we just keep trying them on every now and then, which is what that waist yarn was for. I am using, um, so I just did Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe. And then for the heel, I referred to Mina Phillips, um, Mina's Vanilla Socks recipe. I think that's what they were called, which has got instructions for toe up and cuff down and for her German short wear heel and for her mini heel fluff adjustment. It's a really good sock pattern and it's got just, yeah, it's really, really good. I bought it a long time ago. Um, and I've never used it, so I was really glad to use the heel for that. I've messed up the heel a bit. Also, I was congratulating myself on my brilliant colour management and then forgot that I was going to knit round with the pink. So now I've got this little <laughs> stripe of pink, but I quite like that. Um, and I didn't do the heel pick up very well. It's a bit messy. Um, but Lilia couldn't give a monkey's, so and it's not gonna affect the wearing of it, so I'm keeping going. It's quite an enjoyable project to work on. The colour changes make it really interesting. And that's living in my um, own dodgy bag, which has got little red riding hood on it, which I made myself. Okay, that's it for works in progress. Obviously, that's not it for works in progress, but those are the ones I'm sharing with you today. Um, I'm getting a bit frustrated because I feel like all I'm doing is making small things at the moment. And obviously I've come to a bit of a standstill with my top whilst I sort out getting the, the yarn and so on. And I feel like I just want to move on to bigger things and more complicated things. And I want to start on all these garments that I've always wanted to. And I always said I would do that this year and I haven't. And it's already September and I just, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm ready to move on to other things. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all the wonderful things out there that I want to go and make. Um, I need to get my act together. Okay, incoming. My notes for incoming coming just say look in box and wing it. <laughs> That's not very helpful, is it? But right, I'm not going to show everything that I got at the Southern Wall show. Um, I've got some fabric and stuff that I've already been put away. Um, so I'm just going to, well, I'll do what it says on the tin, shall I? I'll grab, I'll look in the box and wing it. I've got stuff here as well. I just wanted to show something quickly that I got at because I couldn't remember if I showed it on the podcast. I know I showed it on my vlog, but there was a, um, I've had this pattern for a while. I've talked about it before. It's the As If Tea by um, Shay, John Shay Johnson, who is um, knit and crochet. Um, I've spoken, spoken about her, her before, and this is quite a famous pattern now, this As If Tea, um, and it's really, really clever. You use like a worsted weight, but this bit here, is like mohair, so it's like see-through. So I chose some colours when I was at Fiber East. Oh, it was a it was a chore. We went round so many times. I think my sister was about ready to throttle me. But in the end, I went for um, some Triskillian yarn, Emrys worsted, British Blue Face yes, Leicester. It's a lovely rustic yarn. The colour is Penumbra. That's the colour. That's the thing. So that's the worsted one. I've got two of those. 
And then to go with it, I've got some Banshee yarns, and this is a mohair lace. It's kid mohair and silk, and the colour is nightmare. <laughs> but don't know, this look lovely together. And this is a colour that I would wear, which is why I wanted to go for a nice um, blue colour. Um, so that is one garment that I really want to get stuff into. I just feel I need to clear the needles a bit of all these blimmin' socks and leggings. Um, what else can I share with you? Um, I got this bag in the post as a surprise. Now, I talked before about um, Piggy's Market, who I'd heard about via the We So and So podcast, and I bought a bag which I absolutely love. Sorry, hang on. Oh, couldn't see my timer there. Um, and I use it a lot and oh, just love it. And as a surprise, as a thank you for talking about it on the podcast, which honestly was not a chore to do, um, Rianne, who is Piggy's Market, sent me this. And it's a lobster bag. It was a complete surprise. I wasn't expecting it at all. And I love it, love it so much. And um, inside here, I've got a couple of other bits I just wanted to share. Um, Suzanne, who is Green Lampkin Yarns, when she sent the prize yarn, she sent a scheme for me as well. And it's called Blackberries. It's on her sparkle sock base, beautifully um, tied up, as you can see. It's a really lovely colour. And um, she sent it with this beautiful card, just such a lovely old autumnal tum fox card. Isn't that nice? So thank you, Suzanne, for sending that for me. And I mentioned that um, I had a couple of minis that Felicity had popped in. And there's these really lovely tonal minis. And I've got a little glitterable stitch marker there as well. Actually, I should transfer that to my Strictly Socks. And she sent me those two, which I just think are really, really nice. I don't have many minis that are just tonals. So I was delighted with those. She just popped those in when she sent the Strictly prize. So thank you very much for that. So that's some incoming things there. And then when I was at um, the Southern Wall Show, I did a bit of spending. Now, usually I am quite um, considered with things, but this time I just kind of went and went, nah, I'm just going to buy stuff. So it all felt very frivolous. Um, I've got other stuff in here as well. Pom Pom arrived. Um, it's a really good issue. I can't remember if I spoke about the previous issue or not, but I didn't really like the previous issue because there was nothing in it I really wanted to make. In this issue, I want to make everything. Oh my gosh, the, this shawl that's on the front cover is gorgeous. It's a DK weight one. And there's a couple of jumpers in here. That one. Well, it's not a jumper, is it? It's a, it's a tee. And there's another one. Where is it? Where's the one? No one wants to see you just flicking through a magazine. And that one. It's a, it's a bit of a cropped one. I really like it. Oh, I could just show you every pattern in this um, particular edition. It's brilliant. Um, okay. Stop rambling. Southern Wool Show. I did with Sarah one daisy, we went and did the um, colour work workshop and that was really good fun and I bought some of the yarn that we used. Um, oh, I should have got my little swatch that we did in the colour work workshop, although you wouldn't be impressed, it's absolutely rubbish. But I bought two skeins of this um, Jameson's um, jumper weight, two ply jumper weight. I bought them from the stall that um, Sarah was helping out on and I can never remember the name of it. Oh, can't remember, I'll put it on the screen. Um, oh, well, I could look it up in the thingy. I'll look it up in here. Berkshire, no, she wasn't in Berkshire, she was in the grandstand. Arnold Culliford Knitwear, that's where, well, that's the store she was helping on, and they were selling this. So I got two, two of the green and one of the pink to have a little bit of a practice with my colour work, so I did really enjoy it. And I've got the second green all balled up in my new yarn bowl, which is from uh, Joe Pickle Lily, um, who I spoke about earlier. I was admiring this. I said, oh, it's sloths, I love sloths. And she said, well, you can have it. And I said, no, I'm not gonna, I'll buy it. And she said, no, no, you can have it. The sloths are upside down. <laughs> if you have a look, they're like acrobatic sloths. Look, they're upside down on the branch because they should be hanging upside down, not on top of it. So she gave me the yarn bowl the yarn bowl with my acrobatic slots. Uh, so that's another incoming thing. I'm going to have to race. I'm going to run out of time, aren't I? Um, okay, from um, Little French Meadow, she sent me two of their colour, uh, two of um, their Strictly colourways, and I've sent one to my sister who is already knitting it. 
because I wanted to give her one of the Strictly colourways. I knew she would do it justice. And that was the fabulous colourway. It's a lovely blue, blue, purple and red colourway. This is the Charleston um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to get that knitted up. And she also sent me um, a kind of one of a kind one. Um, in a DK because I'm trying to increase my DK stash even though I keep accidentally knitting it into Tunisian crochet apparently. <laughs> um, so that thank you so much for those, Alison, for sending those. That was really, really nice of you. Um, racing through, I've got my little French Meadow mini steam car but I'll talk about that next time. Um, also from the Southern Wall Show, I bought this from Hey J Yarns because I saw it and I liked it. And she had a sample um, on her stall of a shawl that was made out of just one skein of this and it was gorgeous. And it's 70% bamboo, 30% linen. So there's no animal fibres in it at all. And it'd be perfect for like a summer shawl. And that is in the colourway. Is there a colourway? There is no colourway. It's one of her planty yarns, is what she calls them. It's just really, really love it. And then the colour, the skein that I got from Lola for me uh, at Third Vault Yarns, and this is her thing. And the colourway is Ray, R-E-Y. This is her 80%, um, uh, it's Hevelin 4-ply. Hevelin? Hevelin? I'll let you read it, because I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Um, and I came home and I said, I don't really understand this. It's Ray, and Dan said, yeah, yeah, it's a Star Wars character. So, there you go. Um, I just, uh, I don't, I don't really know Star Wars, but I do know that I like this colour very, very much. It's beautiful. Um, and that is um, going to be a shawl or a hat, I think. Too good for socks. And then also on a whim, I bought this from Truly Hooked. It is her Suri lace, just a dark grey. And I got this because I wanted to put it with something and I figured a grey would be a nice colour to go with anything. It's 74% baby Suri alpaca and 26% mulberry silk. So that's really, really lovely. And I also picked up a sock pattern from a little bit sheepish to practice my colour work with. And I thought that looked like a really good starting pattern. I had a little chat with her. I did her workshop last year. Um, on um, drop spindling, which I've been terrible at keeping up with since. Um, I also picked up this pattern for 50p on a whim because it was just so 80s, just loved it. It's actually in Tarsia, um, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll give a bash at that. Maybe not with the funny bobbly yarn, but with a different type of yarn, but I just love the 80s-ness of it. Maybe one day I'll do it. And then Sarah, one daisy, she gave me a little prezzy. She gave me a little pouch that she made. Um, this Because we all went out for dinner on the Saturday night. It was me and Sarah and Tamara, who is Crafty Escapism. And she brought a friend with her as well, another Sarah. Um, and Sophie, uh, who I mentioned, Sophie Swan. Uh, another lady called Lynn, who had a stall selling silver crochet hooks, which were amazing and Faith of the Crochet Circle podcast as well. And my mum, my mum was there. <laughs> um, so Sarah gave me this then. She gave me a little accessories pouch for keeping, um, well, jewellery or um, stitch markers. And this gorgeous little wrapped notebook, which is lined and really lovely and smelling gorgeous in here. There's a little um, a bar of soap, which she picked up when she was on her holidays in Norfolk. It smells lovely. I was saying to her, I don't think I'll use it. I think I'll just keep it with projects. So I got those and there was also something else. There was also something else I wanted to share with you from Fibre East. And that is this yarn. Now I did share this on my vlog, but I don't think I shared it properly on the podcast. Or I might have done, in which case I'm about to repeat myself. So this is the official um, Fibre East colourway that Lorraine, who is Purple Rain 67, who I mentioned earlier, dyed for um, friends that she was meeting at Fibre East. Um, she's not a professional yarn dyer, she just does it for fun. She does it very well. Um, and she gave me one too, I was so thrilled. So this is the official Fibre East 2019 colourway with little mini as well. Um, and yeah, the little people on top with wrapped in the yard, oh, I just love it. And so the colourway's written on the, the, the thing, yeah. Fibre East, 
2019. And it's all caked up and ready to go. So really there's no excuses but to start knitting it, except for the fact I've got a million socks on the go already. And she also gave me this one, which is a special one just for me. It's called Dis Destroy the Light Button. She did say it was gonna be Destroy the Light Button Dudes. <laughs> Um, but she couldn't fit it on the stick. So it's just destroy the light button. Isn't that beautiful? And, it, and she wraps it like that to show you how it stripes. Isn't that amazing? Oh, just amazing. So I wanted to make sure I showed those properly on the podcast because it was a lovely, lovely gift. Um, I'm going to put them back in my podcasting box down there. Right, I've got another. I wanted to talk about giveaways quickly. Um, so... First of all, I want to announce the winners from last time. Now, I it's my 6,000 subscriber giveaway last time, and I had a book to give away, uh, three sock patterns and a skein of yarn, and I did um, giveaway threads for all of them, except for the skein of yarn, because I forgot. So I've put that up there now, and that will now run from this episode until the next episode, and that is for the lovely, lovely skein of yarn for Mrs. S Creations in the golden peach colourway. It's on her BFL Platinum Sock Base, which is a blue face Leicester nylon mix. It's gorgeous, and I'm very sorry, Jilly, that I forgot to put it up on the thread. That is now up on Ravelry now, and it is linked below. So if you'd like to be in with the chance to win this, go along, the prompt is, tell me what your favourite type of donut is, because that's what I am, a donut for forgetting. Right, the winners of everything else, though. So I had, um, a book to give away. Do I have a copy in here with me? Okay, this is my copy, but um, the other copy is in the other room. Um, so I had a copy of Dinosaurs, Mammoths and More, Prehistoric Amigurumi to give away. Um, and I drew, I closed the threads for all of these this morning and drew winners uh, randomly. So for the, this book, there were 90, I drew winners, uh, I drew a number randomly from between number two and 90. So that means there was 89 um, entries and the winner was Hayley, who is Hooks and Halos. She's in Canada and the prompt was, what's your favourite dinosaur? And she said Velociraptors because she thinks it's amusing that they used to look like giant chickens. <laughs> so congratulations, Hayley. You've won this book. Get in touch with me via Ravelry or Instagram or email, whatever. Send me your address and this will be on its way to you in Canada. I look forward to seeing what you make. Uh, the other um, prize I had was a Gypsophilia Socks by Susan Hardy. Uh, there were 93 entries for that and the winning number came out as 14. That is Rebecca. She is elf-like and the prompt was what is your favourite flower and she said white daisies. So um, not much for you to do Rebecca. I will email Susan and ask her to send you your copy of the pattern. Um, the next one was a Country Garden Socks by Ellie Jones, who is Craft House Magic. She donated a copy of that um, to one lucky winner, and the number that we drew was 34. That is Bork P, B O R K P, who is Peggy, and the prompt was Beret, Beanie, or Slouchy, and she said Slouchy. Um, so congratulations to you, Peggy. You've won a copy of that pattern. I'll ask Ellie to send that to you. And finally, um, the Come Together Socks by Lily, who is Nordic Stitches. Um, I asked everyone for that what their fav favourite colour combination was. Mine at the moment is kind of teal and orange. Rather loving teal and orange. Um, and it, there were 90 entries for that. The winning number was number 30. That's Sylvia East, and uh, that's Sylvia, and she lives in Kent, the same as me in the UK. And she said that her favourite colour combo is teal and cappuccino. Very sophisticated. You've won a copy of the Come Together Socks, Sylvia. I'll ask Lily to send that to you via Ravelry. Um, I've got a new giveaway. And don't forget to go and enter the, for the yarn that I forgot to do. Um, this autumn, um, Meteor Books are releasing another Amagurumi book. So I have another two copies of this to give away. One will be given away on Instagram, uh, which I'll announce a bit later in the month. One will be given away on this podcast. Um, I can't remember um, what the release date is for this. So um, I'm, I'm not even sure if I actually know the exact release date. So I'll try and find out and put it on the screen. It's called Amagurumi Treasures. It is by Arena Lee and it's 15 ridiculously cute um, crochet patterns. I'm just looking at the back. It's brilliant. I have a copy of this myself 
It's important that I tell you that. I've got a copy to give away on the podcast, a copy to give away on Instagram, and they have given me a copy for free, for nothing. They haven't asked me to do anything other than give a copy away. I don't have to say I like it or anything. Um, but I do, I should tell you that I have a copy for me. Um, so the designer um, has is Erina Lee. And it, on the back it says, um, she draws up a map to help you discover her most darling amigurumi. Lottie the ladybug dreams of becoming a pilot. Charlie the platypus trains to become a an Olympic athlete. Rosie the fawn gives her all to gardening. And Rex the dinosaur professor has just discovered the fossils of the Crocheosaurus. And they have a lot more friends with big hearts and even bigger dreams. Having these precious friends around you will make you feel like the most fortunate person in the world. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. So I'm going to try and show you the 15 patterns that are in here. And the one that I was really laughing about was the sheep, which, which is on the back. It's just such a cute sheep. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Like I say, I am filming blind. Um, so if it's a complete disaster, I'll put a picture over. There's even a dodo. Oh, honestly, the cutest little thing. Um, so I'm going to open a thread for this as well. I don't know what the prompt is going to be yet. And keep an eye on my Instagram as well, because I will give one of these away um, probably towards the end of September, beginning of October. Um, and yeah, that's it for that. Okay, you might notice things are a little bit different. I think the angle might be slightly different. Maybe, maybe you don't notice, but um, I've also tidied up the living room. I had to go and take some of the video off of my phone and get it onto the computer because it was running out of memory. So I've done that now and I can now finish the podcast. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember <laughs> where I was. Um, so I'm just going to start and I'll have to like cut and edit it together. Um, I had been um, showing my pin um, and I've now not got one near me. <laughs> So I'll try and put a picture up on the screen. And I just wanted to remind you that they are available in my shop. Um, the sale of them helps support the podcast. Uh, mainly it helps me to pay for postage when I post out prizes. With so many prizes for the Strictly Sock Along, it really, really does help. Um, and so far, I made enough money really to just do that and reinvest and buy more pins. So um, yeah, it's working quite well and I'm really glad you like them and that it's been a bit of a successful gamble that I took. So if you would like to buy one and support the podcast, please do go and do that. And with that in mind, I have a couple of other things I would like to talk about. This is and finally where I can talk about anything I like, uh, knitting or otherwise. Um, so talking about making money um, from the podcast, um, I'm going to talk to you in a minute about um, the, uh, my decision to possibly do something that I said I never would and that is to put adverts on the channel. But before I do that, I want to talk, because it's kind of all connected, so I want to talk about the subject of racism in the knitting and crochet and yarny community. I spoke about this earlier in the year, I think around January, February time, and I mentioned it again in my July vlogs. Um, and I just wanted to talk about it again, um, really, just to, to keep talking about it. Um, but what I wanted to share with you was, sorry, there were people walking past, it's school kicking out time now. So there's all kids walking past. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about was what I've been doing and reading that has really helped me on Instagram. So previously I talked about the diversity hashtag. And we all know, well, most of you will probably know the story of what happened now with the Sotmetician who kind of originated that hashtag. But the hashtag is still in use by the community and it's being used in a very uh, good way to share um, uh, information or to just keep the subject um, going but there are many many other hashtags there are many many other ways to go and find out how you can work towards um, changing uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so bad at talking and I've made no notes um, how you can work towards becoming anti-racist now I am by no means anywhere um, near being able to say that I am successfully doing everything that I ought to be doing, but I have, fun it has, the, the conversation that has happened so far that I've been following about racism and white um, privilege and um, unconscious bias and white fragility and all of these terms that I've been learning about this year, they have fundamentally changed 
the way I think about things and can speak about things in some situations, like at work and in my personal life. Um, slightly harder for me on social media. I do admit that. I, I do struggle, but I keep trying. But the main thing I'm doing, and I've got some notes for this bit, because I didn't want to forget, um, is I am, I am watching and listening. I'm reading the posts that I see that are posted by people who are doing excellent work to share um, to share the information, mainly people of colour that are sharing it. Um, I'm looking at their stories, I'm watching their videos, I'm reading their posts, I'm clicking through the links, I'm going to the original poster and I'm I'm trying to take in as much as I can and, and be brave and say hello and you know it can be it can be nerve-wracking just wading in when you don't know someone and going oh hi I really love that jumper you're knitting but do it just just trying to do it um, I have been saving stuff that I find useful in my stories and um, then putting them in highlights so there's a little highlight thing in my profile these are just things that I've come across on Instagram that I have not wanted to forget and I, or I found particularly useful and I'm saving them there. Um, whether or not you find them useful, I don't know. Please do have a look though, because you might, or it might, if you click on it, it might take you somewhere else. If you click on something else, it might take you to a hashtag. That hashtag might help you discover something else. And it's a constant, it's a, I think, well, personal, for me personally, I was talking to my husband about this last night. It's a... It's a lifelong commitment to constantly question your reactions and your thoughts and the way you are in the world. Um, and with, a, especially as a parent, and I do think that's an important thing f for me, is trying to unlearn things so that we do not pass those things on to our children. Un and I'm, by that I'm talking about things like unconscious bias, and recognising our privilege as white people um, and just helping our children to grow up, I hope, to be part of dismantling the problems rather than being part of the problems. Um, yeah, so that's my very in eloquent update on it. But I just, even if I'm rubbish at talking about it and I just want to do it anyway and just get it out there. I really I really hope that I haven't said that in such an awkward way that you're all cringing. Um, anyway, and why is that related to what I've just said about the pins and what I'm about to say about monetizing my channel? So I've always said I'm not going to monetize my channel and now I have clicked the button to be reviewed uh, in order to do just that. And the reason is that the podcast, as it has grown and got bigger, has so he infiltrated my life a lot more. There's a lot more admin and work connected to preparing the podcast, to editing the podcast, to doing stuff like the knit alongs and just keeping it going. And I want to do more as well. I'd love to do more vlogs. I've got a few little ideas in the pipeline that aren't quite ready yet. And the reason they're not ready is I can't dedicate the time to it because I've got a job, I've got kids. I can't dedicate the time to something that's purely a hobby. There has to be a slight return. Now, not all return and reward is monetary granted. I get a lot from doing this podcast. You see that I get sent some amazing things for free, yarn and goodies and just wonderful gifts from people who just want to say thank you for the podcast. And that is a huge reward. Then there's the um, emotional and self-esteem reward that I get from doing this. It's very nerve wracking putting yourself out there. And every time I press publish, I gulp and just think, please don't let this be the time that everyone realises <laughs> I'm actually terrible. <laughs> um, every time it's nerve wracking and every time there's a positive response, um, that builds my confidence. And every time there's a negative response, it's not fun, but it helps me to learn to deal with those things. Um, where was I going with this? Okay, so, um, so I'm going to turn adverts on for, as an experiment. I want to see what kind of monetary um, income that would give me. So many people walking past. Um, if it's returned, say, £10 a month, I'll turn the adverts off. It won't be worth it. If it returns around £50 a month, that might be worth it. I'm not holding my breath for any spectacular income from this. It's just an experiment. But I'd love to know what you see. Do you see adverts at the beginning? 
What are you seeing? Have they appeared yet? <laughs> and also, can you let me know if any adverts pop up in the middle of the video? Because I don't want that. And if I'd rather just not get anything than have adverts pop up in the middle of any of my videos. So do let me know what you're seeing from wherever you are. And if I'm gonna make money in that way and I make money for my pins, that's another reason why I want to keep talking about stuff, important stuff, uh, like um, trying to dismantle racism in our um, Yarny community. Because if I'm starting to earn a bit of money from being part of that community, then I need to hold myself accountable. Um, so I think those two subjects kind of tied in quite well together because I didn't want to just say, I want to make money for my podcast. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do recognise that that puts me in a position of being held accountable for, for my behaviour and I hope that I can live up to that. That was such a garbled thing. I'm very sorry, I'm just very awkward. Um, and I'm British and talking about money <laughs> It's something we find very awkward to do. We'd rather just talk about the weather. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I'll just do a sort of awkward British upper arm punch. You know, yes, I'm glad we had this chat <laughs> about money. <laughs> anyway, so that concludes the podcast. And um, I hope that I've made sense. Uh, my eldest daughter is about to walk in the door any moment. And so I'll just give you a very quick life update. The car has now been fixed. The key had got stuck in the ignition, which is why my husband was working at home because he couldn't get himself to and from the station and I have to run the kids here, there and everywhere on a Monday night. Um, so he couldn't take my car. That has now been fixed, thank goodness. It cost 140 quid, but at least that it's fine. We've got a working car. Um, also this week, I managed to drop a wooden stool in the bathroom that I was moving out of the way in order to hoover and it went through the side of our brand new bath. It punctured a hole on the inside of our fiberglass bath. We've had that bath for two months. I could have dropped that item of furniture at any point in the preceding time into the old bath and it wouldn't have mattered a jot. But no, I waited to do that until we'd had a new bath for two months. So we've got a repair guy coming tomorrow to fix that as well. Uh, that's another hundred pounds. So They're taking selfies. <laughs> They're taking selfies and they don't know that just behind the glass there's a person filming herself talking about knitting. And here comes the oldest daughter. So that will be a good time for me to say goodbye. So happy knitting, happy crafting, and until next time, bye. I've just finished filming my podcast. Ah, thanks. <laughs>
not used to driving a huge great Nissan cash guy. I'm used to my Toyota I go. I feel very high up. We're here. <laughs> Mum's here. We're just walking the millions of miles through the car park to the entrance. It's a lovely day. It's a lovely day. Anything. Right, abandoned mum and Sarah and I are off to learn how to do fair isle. So we're going to become instant experts. We are. We're going to we be are. A whole jumper. Yeah, we're just hour and a half <laughs> full jumper with a clique. now it's many many moons later and i haven't vlogged at all <laughs> mum's still here and sophie's here <laughs> and we've had a very civilized cup of tea so now we're going to go for an uncivilized glass of wine and a meal at the pub i think wine's very civilized <laughs> yes. very civilized <laughs> civilized wine so it turns out I'm pretty bad at vlogging in a social situation, so I'm going to tell you who everyone is on voiceover. That's Lynn in the corner there. She's Lynn Roberts Design. She makes silver crochet hooks. That's uh, Sophie filming me. Uh, there's Sarah, one daisy, and beside her is another Sarah who came with uh, Tamara, who is Crafty Escapism. And here is Tamara. <laughs> she is Crafty Escapism, and next to her is Faye, who is Knit It, Hook It, Craft It, and also of the Crochet Circle podcast. Day two. Day two. This is the end of the vlog. As you can see, I didn't film much, uh, much less than I normally would because I was having so much fun. And thank you to everybody who came and said hello. It was just the best weekend.